I felt like I was living in a nightmare that I could never wake up from. I was in and out of this relationship with a narcissist for eight years. I had declared bankruptcy because I really wasn't focusing on the right business building activities and I racked up a ton of debt, faking it till I made it in a network marketing business. Me and this on and off again guy moved into a tiny one bedroom basement apartment that we called the Bronx. I was broke and financially dependent on this guy, which really sucked. And one night, the neighbors next door were arguing so loudly. I remember it woke me up out of my sleep at three o'clock in the morning, right? The neighbor was beating up his girlfriend and these guys were like, they, they were in their late fifties. The guy was blind and, and, and here's, you know, this guy beating up his wife in the middle of the night. And I remember thinking, how in the heck did my life end up like this, right? Living in the Bronx, 26 years old, bankrupt financially dependent on this freaking narcissist that I couldn't win with. It, it was crazy. Anyways, that night marked the rest of my life. I distinctly remember at 26 years old, my life had gone so far wrong that I made a decision right then and there that I was going to figure out this success thing, even if it killed me. Now the second wake up call in my life happened a couple years later when my dad passed away. And uh, he passed away on June 22nd, 2008. It was the day after his 66th birthday. And uh, back then I was living on the big island of Hawaii selling mops and lint removers. Okay, <laughs> mops and lint removers. I was selling that for about nine months, cutting my teeth in this direct marketing company. Uh, not glamorous. However, th the skills that I learned at this job would prove extremely valuable later in my life. But anyways, back then I was really just living like paycheck to paycheck. And I always wanted to live in Hawaii, right? Sitting on the beach and the, the balmy breeze of the fresh ocean airbrushing my face every day. My sister came to visit me and we traveled around the islands, you know, like little gypsies. It was a blast. And then bam, you know, from one day to the next, my dad was gone. He, he died of a massive heart attack with a smile on his face, which is really weird. But anyways, this really woke me up. I mean, I love my dad. Um, I was 28 years old. I still hadn't started my coaching business that I always said I wanted to do. I was still selling mops, you know, and I felt really just incredibly unfulfilled. And when my dad died, I clearly remember thinking to myself, I'm nearly half his age. I haven't even started. I haven't even started living my purpose yet. And my dad used to always say, hey kiddo, let's get the show on the road. Let's get the show on the road guy. And you know what? It was time to get my show on the road because before you know it, you're going to be dead. Now, my dad was always there for me. He was a famous artist who painted the raw beauty in nature. He created art from the moment he woke up till late at night. That's all he ever thought about. He was a real eccentric artist kind of guy. And we used to go traveling every summer. He would take my sister, my mom and I on his painting trips with him to the coast. And hey, if he sold a painting, you know, we'd keep on traveling. I mean, he was a real entrepreneur. I was really blessed to have him as a dad. And, you know, he, he was the one who inspired me to carve out my own path and, you know, to follow my dreams. And he always believed in me. He truly was a self-made man. He taught me everything about chasing my dreams and traveling and being free and carving out my own career, making a dent in the universe living life on my own terms. Uh, I still really miss him. I still really miss him to this day. Had another wake up call. Ding, ding, ding. Happened in a hotel room in 2011. My partner at the time started to, to that same narcissist guy turned violent on me on his 45th birthday. Same narcissist guy. Uh, took me a few years to get up the courage and finally leave him. That, that was a breaking point. Uh, we'd had too much to drink. He got violent, threw me across the hotel room and I opened my eyes and I was like two inches away from this glass vase or this big glass vase. And I thought to myself, oh my God, like two more inches and I could have been dead. That could be the end of me. I bolted out of the hotel room. I jumped into the first taxi I saw. 
I mean, I barely escaped. And then while I was in the car and the adrenaline slowly started to fade, you know, my, my thoughts started shifting again. And I, I asked, hey God, you know, why is this happening to me? And I distinctly remember hearing a, a loud reply. So you can help women not fall into the same patterns. And then I started crying, okay? Not because of what happened in the hotel room, but because of what this really meant. Because for years, I kept begging and pleading with God. I was like, please, you know, show me my purpose. I will surrender, I'll do it. Just give me a sign, man, give me some clarity. And when I finally got the clarity, I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, I don't wanna be some poster child for emotional abuse. That doesn't look good, right? I, it was all ego, anyways. Um, finally with this guy out of my life and all the drama gone, I, f I finally had the time and the energy to focus on my business. So I decided to use the next year, I was gonna heal all the parts of my life that were out of whack and finally launch this coaching business. And for the next few years, I made almost <laughs> every mistake you could make. I, first of all, I was not tech savvy at all. I had to learn all, I had to learn all this online marketing from scratch. I wasted thousands of dollars on all these online courses and the fake gurus who don't really practice what they preach. I invested in the wrong business building strategies and these fancy websites that you really don't need. I mean, I spent thousands of dollars on getting my first book published. Uh, I spent all kinds of money being published in these funny little magazines that got sent to my house that looked like they were published on a home computer. I mean, I was about to give up. I, I finally, finally, I, I decided to go all in. I put all my ducks in a basket and on a whim, I created my first telesummit, something I would not recommend you do. All right, it's so much work. But anyways, back then I didn't know any better. So. I put this online event together and I was thinking, I'm gonna, you know, this is it. Like, I'm, I'm really good, I'm gonna become a millionaire with this. I was so naive. I, I really expected to build this huge email list and become an overnight millionaire. And man, was I ever disappointed. I mean, I had 18 failed sales call in a row. 18 failed sales calls in a row. All right, I, I was devastated. And I felt like I desperately needed to go back to the drawing board. And then one day I had an idea. One day this hit me. I, I thought to myself, well, what if I combine mm, the sales script that I learned at the, the mop job, right? I mean, I was making like 900 bucks a day selling mops. It wasn't glamorous, but I was making good money. And I thought, what if I took the mop pitch and I combine it with these online marketing methods that I was learning in the telesummit? Something happened, okay? Something happened and, and this, this was the missing key. Combining a proven online marketing system and this offline sales system that would allow me to have clients coming to apply to work with me whenever I needed them. No more hustling and grinding for 10 hours a day. No more banging my head against the wall trying to figure things out. No more working for other people. No more spending hours in traffic. No more missing birthdays and anniversary dinners. No more confusing, complicated online marketing mumbo jumbo. Just a simple and effective system that is proven to work. And boy, did it work. So I used what I learned in the mop job and I applied it to selling high ticket coaching. And I landed my first $3,600 high end coaching client. I will never forget it, it was this woman from Australia. Then I also hosted a small live workshop event and I picked up another $4,200. And I was it, I was off to the races. Boom, quit the mop job and I never looked back. Uh, I was able to finally fix my love life. I got married to an amazing man, my soulmate in Hawaii a few years later. But anyways, that's a whole other story for another video. I built my coaching, consulting, women's empowerment business, Take Your Power Back Now, to a seven-figure level. We make $250,000 a month, not a year, a month. And I get to do it empowering women all over the world. I, I moved to Hawaii. Uh, I became known as the bikini business coach. I finally lived my dream of really, you know, living life on my terms, rocking my life in my bikini, eating fresh fruit every day, living in beauty and sunshine. That was a real dream for a Canadian, you know, used to living in the cold winter. 
and letting the breeze or the fresh ocean kiss me every morning. I mean, and hey, fast forward today, I'm the happiest, most confident version of myself. And you know, I didn't let my past define me. I didn't let my failed relationships break me. I just did what my dad taught me. And I turned lemons into lemonade. I, I found my purpose. I made it my mission to help women all over the world achieve the same freedom and fulfillment that comes from having an inspiring coaching business. A business that actually allows you to build life on your terms, right? With confidence and cash flow. And to take your power back now, overcome fear and thrive no matter what. Hey Rockstar Love Leader, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your power back now and creating the lifestyle and business of your dreams, then you won't want to miss my free masterclass and case study here for you. So click the link, watch it now. I'll see you on the inside.